settings are on, right? The first weekly options expiration. Not the first one, but the second one. But really, more people were back to business. That's why I'm calling it the first one. But the put options on the NASDAQ 100 for overnight volatility were purchased. And I'll go ahead and let you know that the high was $29. Okay. I will also let you know that they closed at 1690, ran to $29 on the high, then pulled back and were the low print of the day. So why don't I have the individual talk about how his training techniques and if you like to ask him questions, you can ask him questions on how he did it. But none, nonetheless, we're going to let him explain it. So, sir, go ahead and explain what the difference is between retail and wholesale. And if you are wholesale on the day to average in a trade, that would address and put you on the side of the market if there were to be risk that would continue on in a shorter term. And going into a long calendar weekend was explain what you did and what how it worked sure well, basically it just happened to be that I have had this option I've just been watching it just kind of as a gauge for the market because the NDX gets up there slightly above 2375 or below it and this contract seemed to have a lot of movement so I was watching it all day not really paying attention to it much I saw it get up to 29 from 1690 and I knew those things were completely marked up you know anytime you get a $13 move or you know 70 80 percent move in an option if you buy that markup you're just dead meat and that's exactly what happened to these people today I watched the contract I know these NDX options they trade 15 minutes after the bell and so I, I brought it up it was 413 there was two minutes left to trade they were I think 1850 by 1750 at the time the low print at the time was like twenty dollars and forty cents so the the bid and the ass were about two to three dollars below the market I saw they closed at 1690 I kept lowering my bids because I saw them all uh, I was out there probably at 1750 initially and then I lowered it I lowered it and then I got down to about 1710 saw them all you know lining up below me around 1620 1630 and I just left it there and I got hit at the last second at 1710 making it so instead of being up you know, 15, 20% on the closed print, you're only up 1.18%. And that's the markup I paid bit, uh, from yesterday's close of 1690. And that 1690 print is the lowest that this contract has ever printed, ever. And these contracts used to trade o upwards of uh, $240. I believe the high was 247.20. And on a daily chart your 20 day moving average is around $93.53 and your 10 day moving average is $48.31 so risk to reward ratio paying $17 instead of $240 you know I'm 90% wholesale I'm comfortable with the risk um, they're in the money <laughs> you know it's very hard to get an NDX option for below 20 that's in the money even if it is a shortened week, you know, it is a regular options expiration. And, you know, I, I expect there to be some volatility. So what I'm seeing here on this uh, put chart is that the high today was $29 and your entry at 1710 saved. So how many dollars of risk, in capital risk entry have you saved? On that uh, just on on the day, I saved uh, one thousand one hundred ninety dollars uh, from buying at the high of twenty nine. So I've okay. taken out uh, roughly fifty eight percent of the risk. And that's this right here. That's his contract. And here is the uh, put chart that I have up. I'm sorry. Here is the put chart that I also have here with the bid and the ask. So you did very well by saving that eleven $1 hundred ninety dollars on that one contract entry that is potentially your upside on a gap down or with the volatile earnings season that starts on Tuesday you're in position for the uh, three-day risk that could happen to the bear as it did happen the bear had the very first reversal today didn't it yes it did and the 
the bull wouldn't you know come off i own some puts going into today i made a slight profit on them coming out right at the top and they marked those down about 30 percent from my exit 20 to 30 percent from where i sold it at the high mm -hmm. of the day to the bid and so buying this you know after reducing my risk on the other put and you know taking my profits and taking the profits and putting them back in here the risk on you you know for a for the four-day period it's it's very nice you know, I, I wasn't buying these on January 3rd at $62 because I wasn't. But that's You're talking where they about were. the calls that I had just showed. The, the no, no, these puts that I just purchased I mean the were puts $62 I'm talking about. And, and 40 cents. You're on talking about January these 3rd. ones here. Mm -hmm. And that's after the 1.5% markup on the first day. Okay. All right. So, would it be fair to say by taking a look at where they've walked the market here? On the NASDAQ 100, I've got a daily chart here, everyone. So, Mr. Chuck, can you see the chart here? Yeah, man. Okay. Can um, Mr. Gibson and Mr. Pfeiffer, can you see how we've come here? You can see that the 2012 has started very good for the bull, right? Right. Yes. And what it's doing is in calendar 2011 because you were here through all of these live entries and this is that upside volatility is it not these are the upside volatility moves that's correct and we still have these are your 2011 bottoms right right all upside volatility right right so we're starting a calendar year we start the calendar year it looks like with a gap on the NASDAQ 100, right? Because right. there's that gap. And it looks like we're going to come back and test the 10 daily moving average, doesn't it? Yes. Right, Mr. Gibson? Yes, we are. So the thing about it is they walked this up on very low on balance volume, did they not? And... During the movement, was a, was this big buy side volume? I don't no, think so. No, it was not. No. This is sell side volume. People were selling into it a little bit, but most of it was with the bull. Has a bull case, I can tell you. I can also tell you that part of our strategies that we've discussed is how if this is going to be a bull trend you're going to have to close above where these other reversals are aren't you aren't yeah, you yeah right yeah. yeah until you're up above here closing here and taking out these old high reversals here that happened right here cuz this is where they happened and that's where it fell off the cliff okay that was last year last year is over Earning season is going to be wild and volatile, is it not? Yeah, that's uh, that's for sure. And you've learned that in your daily market maker training is how volatile and manipulative the bid and the ask and what the tape is doing, correct? Right. So we know right now that it's going to take a lot of good news and a lot of discounting that companies have been marking themselves down in the earnings warning season prior to starting next week have they not yes and retailers have given their warnings you had Chevron Williams Sonoma there's lots of other companies that have already given pre season warning and they have marked themselves down to try to meet the lower growth environment have they not they have well, moving forward, what they will have to do is that when they mark the earnings down and they're going to have QE3 injections sooner than we, uh, what do I mean by that? Usually that will come during the beginning part of the summers when the Fed likes to inject um, liquidity in the system. However, the European crisis debt has led it to levels where today's bear entered that market. But all in all, they didn't end up all that bad, did they? No, they didn't. For now. 
because you've had 14 days up in a row, haven't you? 14 since days. the holiday, since Christmas yeah. week, and right, Gibson, yeah, Mr. Gibson. Sure have. That's right. And the bulls got a case because you started that buy signal over here on the gap. That's where your uh, daily buy signal started to ascend in value. Do you see that part of it? Okay. And here's your peak at 93.8% on a daily NASDAQ 100. Don't you think we were pe re re reaching peak levels where we need a reversal? Yeah. Okay. Because mm -hmm. even bull rallies, they like to make their gaps and they like to make their highs. Then they like to pull back. And they like to pull back and shake the buyer out, don't they? They do, yes. Okay, and we know that's true. So basically to measure if the bull is going to be there, what will end up having to happen is that they'll have to buy the dips at these support lines, won't they? They will. And that you got short-term overbought here because you were 93.8% overbought would cause you to pull back and work some of the overbought light on balance volume. When you take a look at the way the tape was today, listen, they didn't have a lot of sell side volume. Uh, you only had 2.3 million shares traded on Google, just to let you know that the sell side volume wasn't as big as you would because everyone is going to be very bullish starting out the new year with this gap right on this daily level but we know we're coming up and we're going to hit that really good wall but we also know when i draw you a trend line right here right here and i'm going to draw it for you i'm going to go ahead and put this over here now let's take a look down here that's going to be the lowest support level should you break that 10-day moving averaging gap down and go through these support levels on this okay so this is the top all right and this is where the havoc started we already know that we know that that's going to be a support level if it breaks the 10-day simple moving average it would bounce off the bottom end like it does in these wicks right here these daily wicks do you see those yes right and you've been trained to buy these down here and then sell back at the tops haven't you yes we certainly have that's exactly true so basically when you're putting in this kind of a top and a new calendar 2012 it's the 15th actual day of the trading day sequences that had this reversal because we were getting a little bit top end heavy and next week with google's earnings and many others it's going to increase even more volatility is that true Yes. So it's always good to do what your MMT Brian did was steal this bid at 17.10 and take all of that risk out of that entry at the close. And it's NASDAQ 100, 23.75 put. It expires. It's good for four days. So it's good for four days. And, bec and, and, and the people that bought it up here today, they bought the protection at 27, 28, 29 dollars. It's not $17.10, and no one's cheaper than we are. Because you were here when that order was placed and executed, were you not? That's right. Right. We were here. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is, when we're doing our training, we like to do them with all live entries and exits, don't we? Yes. Okay. That was beautiful to be there and see that. Right. What did you think about that bid there, Mr. Gibson? <laughs> that was... Uh, an eye-opener right and Leo if you were present there when that bid was handled what do you think of that risk reward entry it's terrific but uh, I've come to expect that from Brian right well and every MMT that's in the ongoing daily process of learning how to make a bid and ask at a wholesale price is different than any day trading techniques is it not in its entirety 
as far as entries and exits? Oh, it's a completely different setup. Is this is it, this is new completely, and it takes a, a while to learn it. But man, it really works and really works well. That's right, uh, Mr. Pfeiffer. I'm not sure if he's around, but this is what that. And so basically, it's the first pullback. And we got our protection at the discounted wholesale price. I will also tell you in the calendar year that when you look at the Dow Jones today, you can see here clearly how this Dow Jones, which is a bull move over a series of days, has hit a top up here again. And the top is right there, isn't it? And we also know that the 10-day moving average tested support level, and so the Dow came ripping back late in the day, didn't it? 